Hey everyone, I'm Wendy Lee and welcome to another exclusive artist interview here at SciShow Con. Today I am chatting with Greg Crayola Simpkin, artist and designer. Hi Crayola, how are you? I'm doing well, Wendy. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to come and spend some time with us. And let's just jump right into it. When did you start creating? Oh gosh, I was really young. Uh, like most kids start drawing when they're little kids, three, four, five, whatever. I just, I never put the, the pencils down. So it just, I don't know a time in my life when I wasn't making stuff and drawing and making creatures and characters. So the creative juices have always been flowing ever since you were young, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have like sketchbooks upon sketchbooks, upon just tons of sketchbooks to prove it. So <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And I see so many different varieties in your artwork. Can you tell us who or what inspires you, whether it's fictional or real? Initially, it was like cartoons, definitely like Saturday morning cartoons, old Disney movies. Um, I really like like old, old Disney movies. And especially now that YouTube is there, you can go and search like the old Oswald cartoons and stuff like that. Um, from Fantasia to you name it, I, I just loved cartoons and they still find their way into my work today. So yeah. It's always there. <laughs> yeah, I definitely see that as I look through all of your work, artwork. Um, can you tell us what is a defining characteristic of your art? Gosh, I, I feel like it is inserting yourself into a surreal version of our world where the rules are twisted, um, like fish can fly, and birds swim. Like it, it, it's, it's just an altered version of our world where fantasy is normal. That's, uh, that's so much fun because then you just have everything available to you. Anything you create, you know, it's, it's never out of question, right? Right. Take do, you, the <laughs> do you ever um, hide Easter eggs in your art? Oh, all the time. I, I, yeah, I, that's part of the fun. Uh, always did. I, I used to do that when I worked in video games. I used to hide Easter, Easter eggs in video games too. <laughs> there's, there's, I'm always hiding stuff. So yeah. Can you give us um, a little example? Well, I'm always hiding certain numbers and, and names in my paintings. So um, I always put the word Inley in my pieces, and it's a reference to the Black Rabbit of Inley from Watership Down, which is one of my ultimate favorite books of all time. I even, my logo is derived from it. And then I hide some other things similar that pop off. And then a lot of times I'll hide uh, keyholes that reference other paintings. Like you look into the keyhole, you see another world, and that is, absolutely the other end of the keyhole in another painting. So I do little passageways back and forth between paintings. I love that. And I can see uh, everybody right now, like looking at your artwork, looking for these Easter eggs as we speak. <laughs> um, can you tell us what was, because you've been doing this for a long time. What was your first paid gig? My first paid gig, I made Pogs, which was a kid's game. Yes. I, I was just starting college and it's like, you got your slammers, you got yeah. your... Are, and they were called street caps and I did it for through Ted Williams baseball card company a friend of mine hired me and said I need you to draw these backgrounds and a set of characters and I'll do the rest I'm like okay first job I immediately switched my major I was going to be a veterinarian I was gonna, I switched majors to art because I was doing art at the same time I just thought well I can make a steady living doing this but I can keep doing my art my graffiti whatever else I'm into at the same time but then just like ah, I'm just going to do this full time that's amazing. I would say it's working out really, really well for you. <laughs> I'm glad I made this switch. That's really cool. <laughs> so when you're working, what do you listen to while you work? All kinds of things. I, sometimes it's music. I have, uh, you know, different genres of music. I like hardcore music. I like, like shoegaze. I like, sometimes I'm just listening to classical music. And then it'll switch. I'm going to do audio books or podcasts. So it, it's always something different. It, it just changes from week to week. Sometimes I get stuck on like a Stephen King bender and listen to Stephen King audiobooks, And then I can't sleep at night and have to switch it back to some mellow music. So yeah, it's all over the place. I'm all over the map. There is a really good uh, podcast I'm listening to called Tales, which um, retells like old Aesop's fables and Grimm's fairy tales. I really like that stuff a lot. Ooh, I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> and can you tell us what mediums have you worked in and what mediums um, are you potentially interested in? Gotcha. So uh, let's go in order. Pencils, ink, um, watercolor. Then I went to spray paint and digital. And then I landed on acrylics, which is my number one love, which I've been working in for 
it's been 20 years, something like that. And it's just my favorite charcoals. I love charcoal too. And I've always, I dabbled with oils here and there. And I always feel like I'm going to really take a summer and just sit down and really start getting a little handle on it. And I, I have a few oil paintings I've started and I've enjoyed working on, but that's the one I just, I I'm so stuck on acrylics and, and still trying to learn. I still, I'm still learning. It's been 20 years and I'm learning something new with each painting. So I'm really enjoying that journey. Yeah. And with that, your art's going to continue to always evolve and be fresh for sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us which piece of yours in particular pr proved to be um, a greater challenge and why? I just finished a, well, not this year, but the year before I had a show called Let the Outside In. And I had a eight foot by six foot painting in the show. It was the main piece. And it was really dense and full of a lot of characters and a lot of my key characters and introducing new ones. And it, it, just the scale of it alone, it, it was challenging, but that's what I liked the most about it. I give myself something difficult and over the top to do. And I try to just baby step through it and tackle it. And that was probably the hardest piece I've done in a long time, but I'm trying to, I want to step it up again from there. So I'm working on sketches for the next one. Oh, that's so amazing. It keeps us exciting for everybody who loves your art. Do you have a favorite color that you like to paint with? Gosh, um, I like all the colors. I feel like I'm always gravitating to like this grayish blue. If I look at my really early paintings, Mm -hmm. I, it was like a Payne's gray sky. I, I'd always use Payne's gray as my blue and I would dull it out. I just, I, I tend to gravitate. Like in spray paint, it, would be, it was called colonial blue. When Krylon used to make it. And that was like my favorite go-to spray can color when I used to go do pieces and stuff. So yeah. I kind of gravitated it over into my acrylics. I love it. And final question to you, Crayola. What are you most proud of as an artist? As an artist, okay. I was gonna say my family, but as an artist. It can be that too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun watching the kids get into art and stuff too. But I, I just really love the storytelling device of making big paintings. And I wanna explore it more and more. And I'm just happy with the body of work I've been able to create, but I, I'm not satisfied with it, if that makes sense. I'm happy with it, but I keep pushing myself and trying to strive for that next tier and that next level but yeah that's amazing continue to grow continue to evolve Crayola thank you so much for joining us today it's been so awesome to chat with you and of course thanks to everyone for watching at home stay tuned for more content from SciShow Con and don't forget to let your geek side show